I just need a sweatshirt. We're in Nebraska. I'm gonna do a little blasting out in this ag field. There's a uh, standing corn and alfalfa around. KC and I both have tags again in Nebraska. Last year, we actually doubled on the same night. We're 85 yards apart and probably shot our deer 15 or 20 minutes from each other. We heard each other shoot. It was one of the coolest nights in the history of the element. And uh, man, it feels good. It's about 95 at home and humid. And it's about 65 right here right now. KC, see anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, right. So it goes. This early season stuff, sometimes it takes a while to make it to the crop. You know, we both shot deer that were a couple hundred yards from the ag source. And you shot yours after the sun went down, if I remember right, mm -hmm. last year. So, like, they're going to be there. I mean, there's, there's deer in that timber pocket right there. I love early season. You can always tell our videos that are early season because there's crickets <laughs> like that. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's move on to some other stuff, see if we can find some more deer. How hot you reckon the back of a black Angus is in July? So we are actually um, at this Airbnb. If you ever find one that'll let you hunt in the backyard, get that sucker because we're fixing to hunt in the backyard. There's like a draw that comes out off like a river right here, up into the backyard. There's cottonwoods in the backyard. There's a cornfield right here. So ag trees, apparently deer around, and uh, Airbnb owner said we can hunt right here in the back backyard. So. Uh, there's even a ladder stand back there, so I've got my sticks in my pack Probably head back there and try to like, you know Make the ladder stand work, but if it doesn't I got the sticks in the, the platform just in case uh, Had the saddle on and hop up in a tree up there and try to catch one of those trails coming around the kind of the horn of that that Creek right there. Does that mean when you go to the gas station they ask if you caught one you can say yeah? Because <laughs> you said I'm gonna you're gonna try to catch one that's right. I'm going to be catching deer. That's right. Yep. <laughs> Let's go find a bucket of dough and a dough and a buck. Mm. It's kind of weird just like leaving out from the house, you know. Kind of cool. Let's rock and roll. this morning no deer it's uh just the way it goes some mornings but we usually start to figure things out after a few days we just got to get out there on the roads and drive and see what's in what different types of ag and what kind of covers around it and we'll figure it out right now i gotta get something to eat the camera guys have been working hard all summer to become better archery deer hunters. So KC and I decided to surprise them by hopping behind the lens and letting Eric and Michael hunt for an afternoon. Eric gets to call it, seniority. We've got Michael Stoll and Eric Gentry as the contenders here, flipping a coin. Eric has seniority, so he's calling it in the air, and then he decides to either defer or... <laughs> the and so the, the pre-hung set is the one that we're kind of fighting over. Yeah. So, right. you call uh, you call in the air and then yep. you tell me either you want the, the guarantee or the iffy. The okay. sports location. Sense. You ready? Yep. All right, here we go. Tails. I flipped it. Heads! That go! Oh, go. give me the spot. Come <laughs> on now. Come on now, let's go! It's all right. I'm sorry, Tyler. Are you still going with me? We're gonna kill. Okay. Oh yeah, dude, we're about to lay down some Lay down the footage, man. Yeah. 
Dang. Center, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Golly. That's good, isn't it? 30 yards. Yeah. Pretty good. All right. It is hot here in Nebraska. We've been driving by this. There's tons of tracks using this trail. Heading across the road to some alfalfa. Got Tyler Jones behind the lens with me tonight. Michael's down the road with KC. I think it's going to happen for one of us. So let's go find a tree. We're about to see some spooky stuff. Smoking some stuff, dude. <laughs> good shots. Feeling good. Did you put the hammer on that last yeah. one?
Well, I doubled the deer I've shot in my life. <laughs> Here just like that. <laughs> that was insane, dude. I told Tyler earlier, I was like, man, I've been trying to eat out there this year. Man, I hope I can stock my freezer this fall, so it's a good start. <laughs> Two minutes. Gosh, it all went down. <laughs> How dark? Uh, it was still pretty early, like seven maybe, if that. How far? Both at like fifteen. Oh God. man! Dude, <laughs> no wonder you smoked it. Nice. <laughs> good job. Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna try one, but I'm not not typically a heart lover. Oh man, have a heart. turkeys in here that's for sure you know mornings this time of year can be tough sometimes especially when you have like some food sources that you know deer are coming to in the evenings you don't want to go mess those up in the mornings unless you can you know find a way in there and your access is good so if something shows up this morning we got a we got a good shot at killing it because shots are close and we're in a good pinch but tonight it's kind of scary at how long some of those shots could be, and I don't want to, don't want to feel pressure to make a long shot. But man, another beautiful morning. Mule kick. Mule kick. Do I do a mule kick? Casey, kill a big one. Hey, I'm shooting that big eight tonight. Y'all get it done. Hey, brother. Whoa, brother. Just grab your walking boots and come along with me. Kind of a hole over there, but and it's kind of warm, but it's kind of the best place to hide the truck. So we're kind of gonna have to get after it. We're kind of gonna kill a big deer. Hey there, brother, there's a word out there to 
Right, so we're losing cover right here. As you can see, it opens up to the south alpha field we hunted last night. It's fixing to be prime time, but we got to get across this field quite a ways to our, our bail blind out there. So after we lose this cover, which is here in the next few steps, we got to really kind of burn across there to try to get there quickly while we don't have cover so we don't spook any more deer. So uh, let's rock and roll. Kind of the only way to do this thing here. This uh, there's a lot of deer that come to this alfalfa field, but there ain't a lot of cover on this actual property. So we will try to get it done out of the hay bale blind again tonight. There's bucks around. They were sparring last night, so I mean they're here. They're ready to eat. Hopefully, since it's 83 degrees, they'll be ready to drink, and we'll uh. Be ready to make the bow eat. Got them snoods, bro. Dude, he's full strut, dead gummit. That's cool. Oh, he's chasing him around, dude. 24 hours and five minutes ago, there were deer in the field. They're already behind, because it's hot, I feel like. So, that don't make me comfortable, because it's going to be a dark shot, probably. But the one thing, if I'm thinking optimistic, that could be good for us, is that it's hot enough that maybe they want to come get a drink of water. If we can get a buck, come get some water. Maybe he gets, gets thirsty and he wants to come quicker to water instead of eating a bunch of alfalfa before he drinks. That's a 
look inside. These hens are gonna come right by us and drink some water at the, at the big pond. There's a chatty hen right here. I'm gonna turn the camera around and film her in just a second. She's gonna come right by the window. There's 15 hens and five gobs. She said 12 yards. Shoot something tonight, dude. It's fit to happen. Does in the middle of the pond. It's hard and two dudes in a tripod in here, but mainly because I gotta go pretty far out in front of me. I think we got a good setup here. We moved a little bit. These deer are kind of running in. These turkeys are just chilling. The flies, I think the flies might be bugging them. I know they're bugging me right now. It's kind of hot and still, 83 degrees. I imagine, I'm hoping that'll kind of get them up. I and mean, even once they're in the field, there's not enough wind to keep the flies down. So maybe they'll push on up to this water pretty quickly. They won't just sit in one spot eating. It's a beautiful afternoon, otherwise. There's so many cool things out there in the field right now. There's a buck. He might be. Yeah, I think he's that 10 from last night, maybe. No, he's a big 8. He's a big 8, dude. He's kind of walking this way right now. Holy smokes, he's big.
I hate him. bad. Oh my goodness. Dude. Stay on him if you can. He's huge, dude. He's going down right there before he gets to the fence. He's going to crash in the fence. Oh, did you hear that? Oh my gosh, Eric. That, that's one of the biggest eight points I've ever shot, dude. <laughs> I can't believe it. I think I hit his leg on the first shot yeah, below him. Yeah. I expected him to jump and he didn't jump at all. Yeah. I thought he was on edge because he was hearing me move around. I thought, I can't shoot past this window. Oh my gosh, dude. He's huge. I'm shaking. Dude, so give bad. me another five. Golly, <laughs> dude. Oh my goodness. So you can see the chair right here in the middle of the blind. 
he just came on the line. He fed forever out there. I don't think we got any footage of him feeding, but he was feeding at like 150 yards and he was just sitting there eating for forever. And all of a sudden I look up and he is coming. There's does everywhere around us drinking at the water. And so long story short, I get this thing set. Uh, and turned a little bit after we get here. I'm trying to get windows pulled down. The sun is blaring. And so uh, I go to I go to look at him and he's facing the water and this right edge of the window is in the way. And I'm like, I gotta get on my knees. So I go to get on my knees and Eric's like, he hears you. He hears you. I'm like, ah, I'm like, let me know if he looks the other way or goes back to drinking. And so he, he does, he goes, okay now. And I was like, Whoa. pull back. I had, I had ranged him also when I pulled the window down. He's at 34. So I put my 30. Uh, he was, I could see his chest and a few little grass pieces and they're super lit up because of the sun. And so I put it, I was like, okay, he's going to jump the string a little bit. I'm going to put like, hold it on his heart. And I held it on his heart, 30 at 34, kind of shooting a heavy arrow. And it, it, uh, it, it missed him or went low. And I think I might have hit the back of his leg potentially because it sounded like it hit a little bit. And so he went out there and stopped. And I was like, no way. I couldn't get my arrow out of my quiver. I finally, I'm literally dead into the sun almost. I range him 55, crank this thing to 60, put it out the window. And I, I, he was walking slowly because he was limping, you know. And I put it on the, on the front of his shoulder, basically. And I was just like praying, basically. You know what I mean? But like, I'm like, oh, I kind of already hit him. I need to hit him again. 60 and hit like... And he took a step, and so it hit him back just a little bit from where I wanted to, but at an angle away, Smoke City, Nebraska. And as you probably saw and maybe at least heard, he smoked the fence. He couldn't get over the fence, so he, like, went through it, and he's got such a big rack that it just <laughs> smoked the fence. He's, he's dead right there. I mean, he has to be. I, I, I saw him get through the fence and carry a little bit, but I think right there at that cedar. Unbelievable. I've never had anything like that happen. I, I was so disappointed when I missed him because I, I felt like it was a great shot. You know what I mean? I, I tucked it on the shoulder and put it like heart. And I just thought 30 at 34 is going to be a few inches low. And apparently it was enough, which who knows? I'm going to drop my, my arm too with the sun blaring and everything. But I knew that shooting to the west was going to be an issue. And if we had this happen tonight, I was going to move the blind if I didn't get a chance to the east side, so I wasn't shooting into the sun, but somehow we made it work. Praise God, man. You know, I practiced at 60 a bunch today. We also shot a 100 yarder, and I went back to 60 and shot two more shots at the end and was like, 60, I need to know that I'm on at 60, even, you know, even though we goofed around at 100, I need to make sure it's still on at 60. I even bumped my sight to the left a little bit to just make sure I was right dead on. And it's, I can't believe it, but 60 yarder went just perfect. And that is a big eight point. <laughs> I got to call KC. He went right to the left of that wispy cedar right there. All right, well, I guess we're going to get him. Or we'll maybe take him back to the cabin so KC can see him. That way he doesn't have to come all the way out here because we're pretty far apart right now. Golly, what an incredible thing, dude. No blood on it that I can tell. This is Bella. She's gonna practice blood trailing deer. Thankfully, we have a good idea where this buck is, but a feller might need a good tracking dog in the future sometime. Did he break the fence? There he is right there. Didn't it? Isn't that his antler? Yeah, yep, sure on. enough. Golly, he's big. <laughs> oh my goodness. He laid the fence down. That's a big deer. He's got velvet still hanging off. Look at that, man.
I was so disappointed when I missed that first shot low. I just, I don't know. I feel like very thankful. You feel thankful too? Man. Unreal, man. Those beams are awesome. I mean, he's, he's got everything. Brows are good. This two is really good. Threes are good. Beams are good. Mass is good. Width is good. We got to show KC. <laughs> Get this thing out of here and take it back to camp. Meet them there in a little bit. Hopefully he has one too. Unbelievable. You know, I've been, been trying to learn Proverbs 3 this week. And verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. And I just cannot understand how I got that second shot off and how I even hit him in such a good spot. But I was fixing to be sulking and praise God that I'm not. That is one of the coolest deer I've ever shot. Just a Nebraska toad. You know, KC and I actually doubled last year on the same day on public land. Um, and we've worked hard to build our network and just try to get on better properties, find some landowners and hunt some deer that are maybe even bigger than what we could find on public. And uh, apparently we made it work this year. That's probably 19 inch wide, you know, monster eight. I don't know. I don't know what will go, but he's a monster. Beams are awesome. <laughs> what a monster. KC may or may not have let an arrow loose. Shot's not ideal. So we're gonna leave. Michael's coming down here to pick me up. He was in the truck. <clears throat> we're gonna go back to the place we're staying, eat a little supper, and uh, let that deer sit for a bit. That way we can uh, just evaluate what the shot was like and uh, celebrate, because Tyler killed a big deer. shoulder potentially on the on the exit side because it didn't come out oh my goodness that's the biggest eight point I've ever seen in my life what a monster dude yep. that gummit where'd he go <laughs> thanks dude gosh thanks man that's look at that toad he's got the velvet on his I know dude. isn't that cool oh my goodness yeah he's pretty big that G2 right there is long. That's long. He's got the mass. He's got everything you want, man. See this right there, a little chip? Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool, man. Dang, dude. Dude. Yeah. Congrats, man. That's Thanks, a stud. Man.